अंधकारी पल बन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह गणेशाम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओमाइडी और बलवेद गणेशाम महाराज the pathmaker to our liberation art most dear puji guru ji puji santo and all you bhaktos jai swami narayan jai swami narayan so for the past three lectures the us abuz have been conducted by puji niskam swami and in return uh, in the language of english we are going to conduct <coughs> us abha course 4 for this week so today's course consists of three parts kalyankanika a vat from guruji's book along with vachanamrut kadrada first chapter 58 and then finally a uh, charitra of hari bhagat of bhagwan swami narayan swami narayan hare kalyankarik kanika puje guruji's vato It makes sense that an unmarried person gets marriage proposals but we are married to Maharaj meaning no longer unmarried this is kanika vat 1 or kanika 1 vat 75 it makes sense that an unmarried person gets marriage proposals Now obviously in this world those who are young don't have to deal with any of this but those who become age between 20 to 30 years of age get these kinds of proposals and it's normal it's habitual it's something that occurs in a day-to-day -day basis in the world but here puja guru ji is giving a worldly example and putting a principle of spirituality inside of it it makes sense that an unmarried person gets marriage proposals but we are married to maharaj meaning no longer unmarried now we are married to maharaj that's something that one who has a spiritual level can understand but one who is not too much spiritually oriented can comprehend marriage to maharaj meaning marriage to god if we put these words outside in the world who will understand and if those who do understand they'll probably think that one is crazy because how could someone become married to bhagwan well sadguru nishkuran swami has written many many grants but in nishkuran kavya there is 22 small books that are comprised of the nishkuran kavya in one of the books uh it's called the vrutti viva and pretty much swami writes about our vrutti vrutti meaning it's a vision that is internally that comes directly from the soul it is a vision that is not physical but it's invisible and that vrutti we can use to you can say indulge in these five vishes through the gnan indriyas and that vrutti can also be joined with god in a marriage matrimony now sadguru nishkuran swami writes this vrutti viva scripture and off of that it says that dedicate your vrutti to maharaj and become married to maharaj in this way Do not let your vrutti go anywhere else in the world. Do not let it roam in the panch vishes, but hold it in Bhagwan's murti. This is what Maharaj, this is what Sadguru Nishkuran Swami is saying. 
And off of that principle, Puja Guruji is saying that we are married to Maharaj. In the world, there is many, many things we can do. There's many, many places we can go. There's many, many people that we can meet. But a worldly example is after a couple is married with one another, those who are true to one another, there is nothing else for them in the world besides each other. No matter how you can say beautiful of a man or a woman each other see in the world, at work, in the streets, at a public place, there is no whatsoever a thought that, oh, this person is like this and this person is like this and I would like to start a relationship with this person because they are dedicated to each other. In the same way, once we have married ourselves to Bhagwan, meaning our souls to Bhagwan, our vrutti to Bhagwan, there is nothing else for us in the world besides Bhagwan, the Sekantik Satpurush, and the Santo and Bhakto and this divine Satsang. There is nothing else. We have to look at it in this way, and that is the way that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is going to become pleased upon us. So we can see that great Satpurushas use worldly examples and join it somehow into spirituality, making this jeev, making this soul comprehend. Because the principles of Bhagwan, the principles of the Ekantik Santpurush, the principles of Santos and Bhaktos, they're very, very hard to understand. But only when the Satpurush dilutes this formula, only when the Satpurush helps us comprehend, and according to Vachnamrut Kaldaram, middle chapter 13, Bhagwan Swami Lain states that only when the Satpurush manifests on this earth, not born, Bhagwan does not use born, Bhagwan uses the word manifest on this earth, that one can understand the words of the scriptures through him. Only when the Satpurush explains to that person, even if one tries to read the scriptures on one's own self, it's not possible. But only when the Satpurush comes on this earth, it is possible. But such a Satpurush that we have received in the form of our Puja Guruji, that he gives the most simplest examples, yet ties spirituality into it, that anyone can understand. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan has the same principle that he, Bhagwan Swaminarayan used even the most smallest principle, uh, smallest wordly, you can say, Bhagwan Swaminarayan uses in the Vajramat Sarangpur second um, example of a squirrel. Bhagwan Swaminarayan in Gadiani first chapter uses an example of a bee and a worm. Bhagwan Swaminarayan uses the example of a kite in the uh, Vajramat Vartal fourth in a fountain. Bhagwan Swaminarayan uses examples of an iron in a in a in a earth ball. All these examples Bhagwan uses for even the the most simplest person to understand for our benefit. In the same way, Puja Guruji uses an example of marriage in this Kalyankanika for us to understand that we should only be become we should only be married to Bhagwan Swaminarayan and no one else. Now moving on to the Vachnamrut Girdra, first chapter 58. It's a very large Vachnamrut, so we'll only get to the most uh, parts that we need to comprehend, or else one can also understand through the PDF that's provided. Swami Narayan Hare, Girdra, first chapter 58. The body, bad company, and past and scars. One becomes like one perceives the great. At the time of the evening, Arati and Fagan stood fifth some month 1876 american date february 18th 1820 shri marj was sitting in the residential hall of the paramansas in dadakachar's darbar in gadada he was dressed entirely in white clothes at that time an assembly of munis as well as devotees from various places had gathered before him shri marj then asked please ask a question thereupon muktanand swami asked maharaj when a devotee of God engages in worship, 
and remembrance of God. He is disturbed by the forces of Rajogun and Tamogun in his heart. As a result, he is unable to experience the bliss of worship and remembrance. So how can the forces of those gunas be overcome? No, anything that we do, for example, worldly example, suppose that we are driving and we want to go a long distance. The obstacle is weather, expensive prices for gas, flat tires, car breaking down, getting into an accident, getting a ticket, going the wrong direction, becoming lost, our navigation breaking, we running out of phone data, etc., so on and so forth. All these kinds of problems can occur while going on a road, a long road trip. But what are the solutions? How can it be resolved? Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Similarly, Muktan Swami asks a question. Regarding there is obstacles that occur in the form of Rajagun and Tamogun. There is three states that every human goes through maybe per second, per minute, every 15 seconds, every one hour, two hours, every 15 hours. And those states are Raj, Satogun, Rajagun and Tamogun. Each person comprehends or goes through each state according to one's past sanskars, according to one's karmas, so on and so forth. But, now, before we get into that, what are these three states? Well, Satvagun, one feels that one uh, is at peace, one feels like engaging in godly activities, one feels like doing the right things over the bad things. This is a, a good you can say a format to be in or a platform. Rajagun is more desires. Desires to indulge in the punch vishes. Desires to in, indulge in uh, the vishes which uh, will obstruct one from the path of God. And Tamagun is anger, ego, sleep, darkness. These states are constant in a human being. Now, Swami's question is that when the, the Rajagun and Tamagun occur in one's life while worshipping God, how can that be overcome so one can enjoy the bliss of God? It's an obstacle, right? While driving a car, if one gets a flat tire, how can you fix it as fast as possible? What can you do? What are your solutions? While driving a car, if you get a ticket, well, what is your solution? Going to court, pleading guilty, or somehow countering the ticket. What are your options? In the same way, Muktan Swami is asking, Maharaj, when these two guns come, Satagun is not a problem, but when Rajagun and Tamagun come, what are what are our options to overcome them so we can go back into Satagun and enjoy your bliss, your worship and bliss? Now Sriji Maharaj explained, the influence of the guns is due to three factors. One, the body. Two, bad company. And three, the past sanskars. Of these, the guns that arise due to the body can be overcome by reflecting upon the atma and non-atma. This body that we have, it's a cause of rajagun, tamagun. And due to that, one can be diverted from worshipping Bhagwan. Now, how so? This body wants to completely go to sleep. What when you want to? Uh, when you're thinking about, okay, let me sit in front of Bhagwan with Mara and do five Maras. It feels like going to sleep. Well, before it didn't have a thought, but right when you pick the Mara up, that's when it had a thought. That's called tamogun. Another is when you want to do bhajan or kirtan. You have a desire of eating food, eating tasty food, that after I'm done with this bhajan, I'm going to eat this food. Well, your vrutti is not on Bhagwan, meaning that bhajan is not bhajan, but you're in a state of rajagun, you feel like indulging in something. 
So what's the solution for this? Well, Maharaj says, says that if one thinks about one is the Atma and not the body, then automatically this will be resolved. Second, is the guns that have arisen through bad company are eradicated by keeping the company of a sadhu. We may approach a com- we may approach people that take us away from worshiping God. For example, those who are high schoolers, those who are college students, it's a Friday night, you've worked and had many examinations throughout the week of your schooling from Monday to Friday, and your friend and uh, on one day, your Friday Friday night, your friend approaches and says that Saturday night we want to go to the movies and we want you to come. Now you know that every Saturday you have to go to Monday. Every Saturday it's your time you fixed from six to nine p.m. that go to Monday. But your friends are diver- diverting you, giving you peer pressure, and there is no way of getting out because you want to keep your friends. You can say company, and you also want to keep satsang. This is called bad company. And how can it be eradicated? By telling a sant that every time Friday hits, my friends are encouraging me, forcing me, pressuring me to do something with them on Saturday night. How can I divert their understanding? Or how can I get away from this? And whatever the solution that sant gives... When one follows that solution, then automatically that kusang or that bad company will will vanish. And secondly, uh, thirdly, should these two methods fail to eradicate the force of rajagun and tamakun, then the problem lies in the influence of some unfavorable sanskars of the past. These are very difficult to eradicate. Sanskars of the past. Well, in Hinduism... I don't know about other religions, but especially in Hinduism, Hindus have very, very strict beliefs and principles such as life and death, reincarnation, we can say, karma, non-violence, ethics, morals. Such kinds of principles are just intertwined in a, a Hindu's mentality. And from this, the past sanskars, meaning... This body that we have received, we are the soul, and this body we have received is not our first, but it can be our millionth, billionth. We don't know how, how what count body we are in right now. And there is 8.4 million species of animals, creatures, birds, etc., so on and so forth in the world. We have been each and every species, not only once, but millions and billions and how many ever so times. Now, off of these cycles, even of a human, an animal, this cycle is kind of like if one is a bird, the next life one may be a goat, and the next life one may be even a human. It's no order, but such kind of combinations occur for the soul. And when the soul receives a body of a human, Whatever past sanskars or whatever past you can say, uh, um, you can say things you have done, that is embedded with the soul. While the soul is one, it travels through body to body, and whatever whatever body it goes into, the sanskars are seen in that. For example, a soul when it goes into a body of an ant. How powerful is it? Nothing. If one steps on it, it's dead. But that very soul, when it goes into a body of a lion or an ant, how powerful does it become? The lion is considered to be the king of the jungle. And the elephant is the most heaviest and strongest, you can say, mammal walking on earth. Then what happens? Well, these are all bodies that are changing but the soul is the soul but whatever sanskars or whatever uh, you can say things that they have uh, whatever karma the soul has done 
it's been etched with it, kind of like a, a recording inside. And due to that, they may be bad sanskars, they may be good sanskars. But in this case, we're talking about bad sanskars because of Rajagun and Tamagun still remaining, even if these two methods are good sung and thinking about the Atma fails, that means that there is past sanskars. How can they be eradicated? Arnan Swami asked, how can, how can such unfavorable sanskars of the past be eradicated? Sri Jamaraj answered, if the extremely great Purush, meaning Sat Purush, becomes pleased upon a person, then regardless of how unfavorable the person's sanskars may be, they are all destroyed. Moreover, if the great Purush is pleased, a beggar can become a king, regardless of how unfavorable a person's prarabd, meaning destiny, may be, it becomes favorable, and regardless of how disastrous a misfortune he is to face, it is avoided. Our satsang is of six categories that is stated in the scriptures, naming so Murti, meaning the idol of God, Mandir, meaning the temple of God, scriptures, the sastras, Hari Bhakto, meaning devotees of God, Sadhus, meaning the saints of God, meaning the Satpurushas so on and so forth and finally acharya meaning the diocese who is controlling the the sampradaya of these six ungs of these six pillars the sadhu or the saint is the one that is you can say the heart in a human body the heart is the most vital function most vital muscle most vital element in the whole body for it to function now the sadhu if the sadhu is pleased then no matter what happens this person will attain greatness in the future Sadhguru Gopan Swami was in Vadodara and Vadi Mandir and there was this servant by the name of Mangalyo, Mangal. And every day he would sweep the floors. And Swami would be there sitting at his asana, and Swami would become so pleased upon Mangal, Mangalyo, uh, sweeping the floors of the Mandir. Every day he would do this. And Swami would see with his eyes that he was doing it with a good intent. Swami uh, one time became very pleased and called Mangalyo, and he said, ask ask for something i am pleased upon you now this soul when the satpurush asks or bhagwan asks that i am pleased upon you ask for something this soul does not know what to ask for this soul only knows everything in the world but nothing beyond the world so mangal you asked for you know how my situation is i'm very poor swami i don't have anything please do something Swami became pleased and said, it will be done. So, every day this Mangalya would come to Mandir. Every day he would meet Swami. Every day he would pagilag Swami. Every day he would do dunwats. Every day he would sweep the floor. This was his routine. But Swami became pleased on that day and fulfilled Mangalya's wish. And due to that, in a very short amount of time, due to Swami's blessings, Mangalya became Mangalyo, uh, Mangal Divan. Meaning, a very, very, you can say, high position in the king, uh, in the king's kingdom. And one week went by, two weeks went by, three weeks went by, a couple of months went by, and Swami asked one of his santos that, Mangalyu, where is that Mangalyu that used to come and sweep the floors here, do dunwats, and meet me? Where is he? Swami, uh, all the santos that knew said that, Swami, that Mangalyu has become Mangal Divan now. Do not call him Mangalyu. Call him Mangal Divan. He is now at a very high position. Swami, in his heart, through his omniscient powers, knew that something has gone wrong. 
that this power is turned into something bad. So he requested his santos that Ekwakat Bolao, call him one day, please, here to meet me. I have not seen my Mangalyo in many, many days. I want to meet him. Swami used to say, my Mangalyo, M. So one, one of the santos must have uh, contacted this Mangal Divan, and Mangal Divan came with his full attire, not looking down, looking very sharp, without without even doing dunwats to Gopan Swami or Maharaj, their Maharaj's murti, said, Bolo. I mean, he said, what? You have called upon me? He had this power on him that I, have, I am something, you know? <laughs> that Gopan Swami <laughs> looked at him, he's like, Mangalyo. And he's like, what do you mean Mangalyo? I'm Mangal Divan. Only two months have went by. <laughs> I am Mangal Divan. Why are you calling me Mangalyo? Ah. Huh. Swami said, in his heart, he was thinking, he's like, Are Bhagwan, th this is not good. And Swami reversed his fortune and said, Swami says that this is not a position for you. He thought in his head. And he just folded his hands to Mangal, Mangal Divan and just, he left. The next day, <laughs> the next day, Mangalya was back with his normal clothes, sweeping the floors again, <laughs> just by Swami's thought. But this is what? Well, this is the Satpurush is becoming pleased. A beggar can become a king. This is a, a, a exact example. A beggar can become a king. This is more, I, the example I gave was more in a physical format, but a beggar becoming a king, meaning not in this world, but a person who has very little sanskars, a person who has very little virtues can become very virtuous. A person's destiny, prarabdha, can be changed. Just like how Valero Varu met Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami and his whole pradab changed, his whole destiny changed. Just how Jogan, Jobam Pagi met Sajan Swami and his whole pradab, pradab changed. In the same way, when the Satpurush becomes pleased, all these things happen. But now the question is, Sadguru Anandan and Swami ask, how can a Purush or how could a person please such a great Purush? What's, what's a formula, right? You need a formula. Gopan Swami saw something in Mangaryo and due to that he became pleased. But for us, mere humans, what is the solution? What can we do to pre please our Ekantik Satpurush in the form of our Puja Guruji? How can we please him? Well, first of all, he must be honest with the great saint. Honesty is the first thing. And honesty, according to school terms, is the best policy. Honesty meaning what? I stole this, I did this, I did that. No. Honesty meaning in your heart, though everything that is keeping you away from Bhagwan, everything that is a swabhav of yours, meaning you have ego, greed, lust, anger, jealousy, all these swabhavs you confront in front of the Ekantik Satpurush. This is the honesty, this is the level of honesty that Bhagavan Swaminarayan is talking about in the Vachnamrut. You're probably asking, what is the reason for that? Well, the Ekandik Satpurush does not need anyone in this world. But the Ekandik Satpurush has come on this earth with a mission from Bhagavan Swaminarayan to liberate as many souls as possible. Now, what the Satpurush is seeking is through his X-ray machine, his omniscient powers, he can see directly inside the soul and see what problems this soul has. But he does not speak through the mouth. He wants that soul to confront him because he wants to see how much cup, how much garaj, how much need he has for me. This is what the Satpurush is looking for. Why? Because in this world, whoever a person has a need for will do anything for that person. Yes? 
if we have a need for our partner, our life partner, we would do anything. We would work 12 hours a day. We would make as much as money to buy them whatever they want. Yes. In the same way, the Satpurush wants to see how much need he has for me. Because a person who has need will do anything. And what does the Satpurush want us to do? Release our sobhaus. This can only be possible if a Satpurush sees that we need him. That's why honesty is mentioned here. Second, he must also forsake lust, anger, greed, infatuation, matsar, egotism, jealousy, arrogance, and all desires and cravings. Now, this soul is completely covered with these kinds of bad swabhavs. It's not inside of the soul, it's covered with it. It's a layer of maya. Now, the very purpose of coming into satsang is removing this maya so we can attain Bhagwan or we can become conjoined with Bhagwan, we can attain oneness with Bhagwan. But how can that be possible? Well, the Satpurush wants to see us make an effort. Just like our school teacher wants us to see or wants us to make an effort, even if they know we are struggling in math, we are struggling in science, the teacher wants us to see us go to tuition. The teacher wants us to see that we're making an extra effort. The teacher wants us to see that we are asking him or her for some solutions, some extra help after school. In the same way, all these swabhavs that are mentioned, they are not in our hands to eradicate or destroy. Because these swabhavs are like great mountains, as Sadhguru Gunatitanan Swami says. But they can be removed, they can be destroyed by this solution of making the Satpurush happy. But the Satpurush seeks us to make an effort in trying to remove these swabhavs. That's all he wants to see. Make an effort. Try. Try your best. If you fall, I'm there to pick you up. This is his message to us. But if we just put everything on the Satpurush's shoulders and expect him to do everything and we not do anything, that there is no way that one can clap with one hand. You need two hands to clap. In the same way, if we help the Satpurush destroy our Sobhavs, then they would be completely destroyed. Lastly, moreover, he should behave as a servant of the Sant and maintain a constant effort to eradicate egotism from his heart. In this world, in each and every soul, egotism is there. And to constantly attack this demon ego is our main effort as a Sant or as a Hari Bhagat in this satsang. The Satpurush wants us, wants us to do this. While doing so, internally, he should physically continue to bow to everyone as well. Bowing to everyone. It's said that, Jinnamay Sone Game, meaning whoever bows, everyone likes. And Satpurush wants us to do this, and doing so, when he sees this on a very long basis, then he would become pleased upon us. This is the formula to please the Akantik Satpurush. And after reading the Vachnamurut, after, after, after doing much Sant Samagam, in my opinion, the best solution to become one with Bhagwan, to become close with Bhagwan, to have all our flaws eradicated, is to please the Akantik Satpurush. To attain the Rajipo of the Akantik Sadpurush is the best and easiest solution to attaining Akshardham and to attaining Bhagwan's Rajipo. And finally, Maharaj says in this Vachnamrut in brief that however one perceives the Sadpurush, that's how one becomes. So if one perceives the Sadpurush to be free from anger, then one also becomes free from anger. If one perceives the Sadpurush to be 
lust free then one also becomes lust free etc so on and so forth and at the end the only be Maharaj mentions the only means of becoming such a firm devotee is by behaving as the servants of the servants of God and by by realizing all of these devotees are great and I am inferior compared to them all realizing this he behaves as a servant of the servants of God and uh, of the devotees of God. All of the evil natures of a person who behaves in this manner are destroyed, and day by day noble virtues such as Gnan Vaidagya Bhakti continue to flourish within him. The solution is to become Dasna Das. Guruji has continuously uh, sung in his Katha, and we know. Hari ke das hi das, tin ke das ho ikar, chad ka pat kar na naash, vart naash da ho ikar. Das na das tha ine, vadi je rahe sat sang ma, bhakti te ni bali mani sh raachi shate na rang ma. The only solution Please, the Akantik Satpurush, according to this Vachnamrut, is by this formula and ultimately to become Das. Sadguru Gunatitan Swami says in his Vart, Vat that the Satpurush cannot become pleased, but only when one folds one's hands as and does what he says, the Satpurush becomes pleased upon us. And when that happens, then Bhagwan is not far away. Bhagwan is very close to us. And ultimately, we receive his bliss. So, this is the Vachramrut Gadada, first chapter 58. And finally, a story uh, of how a devotee of the village of Rochka takes the, takes the uh, a box and stands by the uh, side of Jairam Brahmchari, is attached in the PDF. Please read the PDF. If you have any questions, feel free to email loyadamnj at gmail.com. Uh, this is uh, UA course 4. Saying so before that, uh, UA Adivision, Loyadam UA Adivision is a Sibir for those who are older Haribaktos from the age of 21 to, to the age of 50. Uh, it's located in Tampa, Florida for the very first time. Uh, it's, uh, the registration is on our website, theswaminarayan.org, and the dates are May 22nd to May 25th. Those who are yuas, those who want to seek more higher knowledge for for your age range, please make sure to uh, attend this Sibir, uh, which is located in Tampa, Florida. Saying this, my humble Jay Swaminarayan.